this should be a celebration time when we're taking the communion. And maybe that's what we're supposed to be sharing this time and encouraging people out there that are listening to this to look at your communion time as a celebration. Yes. Yes, you do it in remembrance. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but celebrate what it, what you're remembering. You're remembering that Jesus Christ died on the cross to set you free. Yes. Yes. It's, Amen. it's a shouting time. It's a mm-hmm. it's a glorious time. You know, it's, it's not to play the funeral music. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, it's, it's to play the celebration music. God promises in Joel 2.28 to pour out his spirit on all humanity. Welcome to Global Outpouring, where we contend for that promised outpouring, we equip for that outpouring, so that we may engage in that very outpouring. I'm Philip Buss. And I'm Sharon Buss. Welcome to the podcast today. We're so glad that you're with us for this very special podcast with our dear friend, Dean Braxton. He's just an amazing man of God who loves God with all of his heart. And he went to heaven for an hour and 45 minutes when his body died. He left his body and it died. And he is going to share with us something that Jesus told him that is dear to Jesus' heart. He said that on this planet, we don't celebrate him enough. Thanks so much for joining us today. Before we get started with our dear friend, Dean, we want to encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to go to our website, globaloutpouring.net, and be sure that you have subscribed to our email lists so that we can get in touch with you in case something happens. Sometimes that happens on these platforms that you might get thrown off or something, and we want to be able to reach you And we want you to know that you can reach us. There's a feedback form on globaloutpouring.net, or you can email us at feedback at globaloutpouring.org. We want to hear from you. We'd love to know where you're listening from and how these podcasts are helping you. And there's all kinds of wonderful things on our website that you can avail yourself of, our, our bookstore and our blogs and Just wonderful things that are available there that'll help you grow. And we want to help you equip to be used of God in these coming days of his outpouring. Well, our brother Dean Braxton, it is such a delight to be together with you again. We just always so, so, so enjoy being together with you and hearing the things that the Lord has showed you in your visit to heaven for an hour and 45 minutes when you left your body and it died. And uh, and here you are back, and the Lord told you to go back, and He, He kind of gave you that name. Go back. Yeah, I, I love that. We've we've had so many podcasts with you, and and we'll put some some links to them in the show notes. But uh, we just want to welcome you once again, and we're excited to see and hear what God has to open up to us today. Well, I'm glad to be with you, also both you and Phil, to be able to share some things again. It's kind of exploratorial on how we're sharing, because I'm sharing some things that I experienced with the Father of Jesus in heaven, and just praying that those things will connect with some of you, and you'll bring out some more things around the Hebrew or the um, Jewish people and how they look at things, especially during this time, you know, when we're recording right now. You know, I did a a, a Seda last Sunday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with Pastor Young. Out oh, there wow. in Illinois, and it was really cool, you know. And I always like it because of um, the details that are brought out yeah. of what things mean and why we're doing them. And then, if you think about the Last Supper with Jesus and how important that really was, you guys probably have even more details on that than I do. I could tell you that I just remember one of the things Jesus said to me when I was there, and I've told you this before that we don't celebrate him enough on the planet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 I could see that, you know, with the Jewish customs, they had celebrations for a whole lot when it came to God. Mm-hmm. And those things have gotten lost over the years, you know, yeah. and some of them be- became very traditional and probably very religious mm-hmm. in their mm-hmm. in their celebration. Yeah. But, you know, Jesus literally said to me that we don't celebrate him enough on the planet. What came to my mind um, later on was when I was laid in the hospital room, we celebrate them for Easter and then we celebrate them for Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, those two times of the year, those are getting attacked like anything, Mm -hmm. you know, and and not just in the United States, but around the world. Mm -hmm. I always call Easter 
the biggest harvest day that we can have in the United States. Because <laughs> <laughs> wow. a lot of people go to church. Yeah. yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. On, on Easter, that don't go to church any other time of the of the year. It's true. You know, but the secular world is making the Easter bunny more important than Christ dying on the cross, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. but in saying that to you, I just, you know, I'm really enjoying doing this because we're bringing out things that are, connecting with that realm there with this earth through some of the things that you guys know about the Jewish people and the traditions that have taken place. I don't know them all. You know, I don't either. Uh, no, I know a few of them. <laughs> you know more than I know. Well, you know, I, I just, I just want to make that clear that what we know we'll share, but there's so much more that we don't know. And we're not trying to, we're not trying to be know-it-alls, but it's a, yeah. it's amazing to me how we do have, a connection that the that the Lord will give downloads to answer some of these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can, that's good. Can I just throw in a, a thought yes. already? Um, the actual celebration of Passover mm-hmm. in the scriptures in the in the Greek in the New Testament, the word where it says Easter is yes. really the word for Passover. Mm-hmm. Pesach. Okay. Pesach. But it's interesting to me, and and I learned this not so very very long ago that I was always bothered by the name Esther because yes. it connects with Ishtar, which was, mm-hmm. you know, it's one of those Babylonian right. gods. And, right, and, right. That's, and that's where the, we get the word Easter, Easter. as well. Oh. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. but what I learned is that in Hebrew, the name Esther means hidden. Mm-hmm. So oh. if, the, if the name Esther means hidden, then Easter probably also could be pulled the, oh, out of in, yeah. out of Hebrew, yeah. you could say that that here is a hidden message, and here is a day that is has been hidden from a lot of people. Right. That the oh, message wow. has been hidden, but it's a place. It's the place. It is the the place because nobody else in any other. I'll use the word religion, not because I think Christianity is a religion. But there's no other religion that has their hero that was raised from the dead. Yes, yes. yes. And that's the whole message of, I don't even like to call it Easter. I call it Resurrection Day. Yeah, well, that's yeah. what we call it. But, but yeah. you know, the, the fact that, and I, this just came to me while you were talking about it, it could mean hidden as well. There's a hidden yep. message here. Well, what do people do on, on Easter? They color eggs and they hide them. Well, that's true. Yeah. And the kids, you know. Go yeah. find them. I don't know if there's any. Well, when you're talking about hiding, you know, yeah. that's. Yeah, it's true. And, and, why, and what, you know, part of the Seder is that, that the yes. breaking of the matzah and, and putting yes. that one, hiding that they one hide away. The one. They hide it away and they uh-huh. hide it from the children and the children go find it. And whoever's the one that finds it gets so some hiding, kind of reward. Hiding eggs, maybe that's just uh, Satan's count, counterfeit. It's a counterfeit. It's a counterfeit. It's an absolute yeah. counterfeit. But. You know, there's there's something to be discovered here that's been hidden, and yes. and our Father wants us to understand that He's He has hidden treasures for us to find. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're not mm-hmm. hidden from us; they're hidden for us to find. Yes, and I also when when we talk about that, sometimes I always think people don't realize it's for when you're ready to find it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you search for those things and you search for those things and you and I both know the journey is just as important as finding the gift. Oh yes. And and to me, the journey is so much fun because it it develops you along the way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things that I think we all have to uh, mature in, Mm -hmm. whether we realize it or not. And most of the time we think we're already there. And then we find out we have to go through something and that Mm -hmm. helps us to be, more refined, yes. you know, because of that fire to become everything that God wants us to become. So there's a lot there in the sense of what you're talking about and hidden. Yes. And, you know, I go back to what I said earlier, where Jesus said, you know, we don't celebrate him enough mm-hmm. on the planet. You know, we had Earth Day just recently. Mm-hmm. It's ironic that they're around this time of the year also, Yeah. you know, where we're celebrating Earth and we're talking about this about Earth and that about Earth and you know, trying to save planet Earth and everything like that. We know that planet Earth is going to be uh, renewed yes. <laughs> you know, through oh. fire. Yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh my. all the bad <laughs> stuff gets burnt up. All the bad stuff gets burnt up, you know. And so we know that that's going to happen. 
but it's ironic. And, and I really believe, like I said on one of the shows, I really believe God is the the ultimate greenie there was because he even told the, uh, the Jewish people how to, what do you say, farm. Mm-hmm. You know, so many days you did this and then you quit after, I think it is it seven days, uh, seven years you yes. quit for a while. Oh, yes. And then there's the 50 year, what we call the year of Jubilee. Mm-hmm. And as uh, you know, and, and all that is to really, to uh, give the earth a break. Yes. You know what I mean? It was really to give the earth a break. And why would God do that? You know, why would God have that in place? N- knowing probably that because of sin, entering into this world and this planet de- being destroyed like it is. And I know we, you know, some of us say because of the car, some of us say because of this or that, but the reality is sin that's ultimately destroying the planet, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, because it's deteriorating. It was never meant to deteriorate. Mm-hmm. Most people don't realize that, you know, when God created the planet, right. he played, he created the planet to live forever. And then Adam messed up and brought into that deterioration or sin into the world and everything got affected all creation. Uh, got impacted by it. Yeah. But in saying that to you, I go back to thinking that even on the planet, you know, if we read in Romans where it talks about how God had revealed himself through the things that we call quote unquote nature, mm-hmm. you know, sure. and that man took those things and started worshiping them instead of worshiping him. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, trying to think this tree is that, you know, is something that we need to bow down to. Mm-hmm. And yet Jesus was telling me that even there, we don't celebrate him enough on the planet. Right. Yeah. You know, we just, and I don't mean sometimes individuals may celebrate him, mm-hmm. but as a whole, there's very few times we come together to really celebrate God. Maybe a church may do it here and there. I, when I did the Amish in uh, Indiana, I, I didn't know this, but they celebrate Ascension Day, the day that Jesus rose from the, from the earth going up to heaven. Mm-hmm. That's a holiday for them. Mm-hmm. And then we were in, I think it was Finland or Sweden, I forget which country. And they actually have that day as a holiday, wow. you know, in those countries. And so I forget if it was Sweden or Finland, somebody else will tell me one of the countries. But I remember being over there and it was Ascension Day and it was a holiday over there. You know, we don't do that here in the United States. But the reality of it is Jesus wants us to celebrate him more as a group to gather. And uh, I think we have revivals or um, awakenings that take place, but they seem uh, later fade away. You mm-hmm. know, uh, they go go away. And in, in that happening, those celebrations, we may remember them, but we don't celebrate them. Mm-hmm. You know, God poured out this time at this moment. Mm-hmm. It would be great if we did, if we didn't forget those. Because I remember when the Israelites reading in the Old Testament crossed over the Jordan and they conquered the land above the Jordan. And then when they were coming back, uh, was there three tribes with the tribe of Reuben and Manasseh mm-hmm. and, and Gad. another and another tribe, Gad, built that. Remember that altar? Yes. And the rest of the, the, the Israelites thought that something was going wrong. Mm-hmm. And they said, no, we're building this so our children remember what took place here. Yes. I don't think we do that. Yeah. You understand what I'm talking yeah. about? That is one thing that the Jewish people are very strong about is remembering. Yeah. And they, they, they will celebrate the life of a person. They'll go back to the grave a year after they, yeah. that person yeah. passed away. And I think they continue to do that on, that on that date to celebrate so that they won't forget. Yeah, I had a friend that just their son went home to be at Jesus and they were Jewish mm-hmm. just recently. And within the last four weeks, and uh, the mom, of course, had a hard time with her son leaving the planet. And she texted me on that day and asked me to pray for her as they were celebrating the son leaving. Uh, what did they, they, she called it a certain name. Uh, I forget the name that she called it, but it was a celebration of her son that day that had been gone for a year, just like yeah, you said. Yeah, the yard site. Yacht, yeah, that's what it was. That's what she yeah, said. It's, I think that's a Yiddish word. It, it, it sounds kind of German. It means the year time. Okay. She asked me, said, Ding, I'm having a hard time. Pray for me. And as I did, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because she missed her son so much. The good thing about it, he's with the Father and Jesus in heaven. Mm-hmm. And I was just trying to encourage her and, and keeping her uh, remembered. And, and you mamas out there that have lost a child, I always say, you know, you need to grieve. You need to go through that. But... I always think, think about where they're at. Mm-hmm. They're they're getting something in the sense of what you wanted them to have. Everybody wants their children to be happy, 
Mm-hmm. They have joy. Yeah. They do not have any issues going on in their lives. We both have children and we raised them to try to get to that point here mm-hmm. on the planet. But now they're in heaven, not your children or my children, but you know, these children are, and they're having everything that parents wanted them to have plus, yes. you know, so there's yeah. a joy in that. Yes, we miss them. Yes, we grieve. Yes, we wish they weren't gone. But the reality, we can also grab the joy that they're there and they're having everything we wanted them to have plus. Beautiful. You know what I mean? And that they're in our future. They're in our future. Yes, they're in our yeah. future. Yes. And so, but to go back to that, I just want to really emphasize that piece of it when Jesus said to me, you know, that we don't celebrate him enough on the planet. When I first got back, to be honest with you, Sharon Enfield, I was saddened by it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was really saddened by it. And I, and I think the sadness I had was more than just uh, my sadness. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was if if God had been on the planet or Jesus had been back on the planet, he would have been saddened by how we have neglected the celebration of him. Because remember, I think we were supposed to do it every time we took communion. Yes, and how often do we take communion in most of our churches? You know, yeah, well, Philip and I try to take mo- take it every day, but uh, yeah. yeah, once a month or some churches only once a year and some churches never. Yes, but I, I'd say that because I look at that, it just, just came to my mind, that was supposed to be a celebration. Yes. You understand what I mean? Uh, you know, that Jesus Christ, uh, uh, you know, was died on that cross. And because of what he did, now we have eternal life, you know, because of what he did. And looking at that, you know, that should be celebrated. But I've always had that time as a solemn moment, you know, mm-hmm. very kind of like, mm, do you understand what I'm talking about? That's a good way to put it. I don't know how to spell it, but it's good. <laughs> it, it's, wow. I can remember what the church I first went to, and then we would all say, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. You know, mm-hmm. I forget the rest of that song. And then we kind of like sang that song and that'd be about it. And so it was kind of almost a sad moment and it shouldn't be. Oh. It should be a very joyful moment yeah. um, of, of celebration. You know, probably, hey, tell me this. Was that feast supposed to be the same thing? A celebration? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. The, the feast of Passover that, yes. that, Jesus, that Jesus was having this... It wasn't exactly a Seder, but we've been learning that the meal that Jesus had with his disciples would have been like a picture of, it's the only record that there is of any kind of celebration of the Passover in, in scripture. They don't, they don't tell you how to celebrate it otherwise. And so people, have, even Jewish people have looked back at the Last Supper to get an idea of what, what an ancient celebration was of Passover uh, mm-hmm. because in, in those days, because they still had the temple, they were still killing a lamb as a sacrifice. And it was a personal sacrifice for the family. Mm-hmm. And it was the only sacrifice that a father of the house could do himself. He had to take the blood to the altar to pour it out, but you know, he was doing it for his family and then they ate it. Okay. So this this celebration that they do now, well, they don't have the the temple, so they can't pour out the blood, so they don't use a lamb anymore. Mm-hmm. So, so they've created this retelling of the Exodus story as a part of the Seder because they don't have the temple anymore. Right, right. But what most people don't really get a handle on, that it was revelatory to me, when Jesus said, uh, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Right, right. Okay. It was the blood that was put on the doorpost and lintels in Egypt. Yes. That spared their firstborn son. Yes. Mm -hmm. That sacrifice of the firstborn of, of Egypt was what loosened the children of Israel from slavery and gave them into freedom. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have that picture of Jesus being that for us, but, when he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, uh, for years and years, I always assumed that that meant, okay, so we have the New Testament. And so this book that we have is somehow connected to this cup. Wow. But it, it never occurred to me until I read Jeremiah 31, starting with verse 31 through 34, 
that explains what the new covenant is. Right. And I hadn't ever heard it preached. I mean, I had always heard that becoming born again, you get a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I didn't necessarily, ex I, I asked Jesus to come in my heart. I was six years old. So from from then on, I said, well, yeah, I have a personal relationship with Jesus. He lives in my heart. But there wasn't that communion. There wasn't that communication there. And I, I think there's a gazillion Christians out there that really have not had that experience of knowing him, which is one yeah. of the things that there's four things that God says through Jeremiah that are going to happen Yes. As a part of this new covenant. So there's yeah. there's the forgiveness of sins, which we right. understand. We've got that. Yeah. And there's, uh, he said, I'll write my word in their hearts yes. and in their minds. Yes. And that, I think that took place on Pentecost. Yes. You know, when, because the original Pentecost was when God wrote with his fiery his finger, finger yeah. into uh -huh. the, into the ta tablets of, of stone. Right. And now he's going to write it on fleshy tables of the heart, right? That's what mm -hmm. Paul said happened. So that's the first two things. And then the next one is, I will be their God and they will be my people. Well, that's what, that was part of the first covenant. It was right. supposed to be that. Yeah. And then the fourth part is, and they will know me. Yeah. It's about knowing him. So this idea of having a personal relationship hmm. It didn't sure. dawn on me until I'd been walking with the Lord for years and years and years that wow. that this cup, this communion cup, this Seder experience, mm -hmm. this Passover celebration is for the purpose of knowing him. And it says that that they will all know me wow. from the least of them to the greatest. Everybody will know him. You won't have to t speak to your neighbor and say, it's time for you to know God. Because yeah. everybody's going to know him. You know, and that's what he died for. You know, the, yeah. the, the disciples walking with Jesus on the road to, to Emmaus. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. And well, when he broke bread with them, their eyes were opened. Yes. Right. Something happened I mean, there. It, they didn't say there was a cup there, you know, but. Yes. And it would have still been during that time of, of unleavened bread. Okay. So it would have been unleavened bread that they would have had. Wow. And I, and I go back and that's something to celebrate. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. When we take that communion that we do, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think we realize that that's supposed to be a celebration time. It seems like to me it's a funeral time almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. very solemn thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's because but the what, same night he was betrayed. Yeah. You know, I say something to point out all the time because it was such a great, you know, experience for me when I left my body and went to be with the Father of Jesus. And it was really something to know that my body uh, died and then my spirit left. You've heard me say that before, you know, that my body died first. The physical part of me died. I mean, not that died. My spirit left first. That's what and I then thought. My body died. That's what yeah. I mean. I'm glad you. you yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find this scripture that I like to quote out of uh, Hebrews, the ninth, second chapter, the ninth verse. But the, re the thing that really got me about that was that, I didn't know it was going to be that way. I didn't know that first I was going to leave and then my body would die. Um, that's something to celebrate. Yes. That we, that we, I think, are supposed to bring up in that that time of communion. We talk about, you know, drink his cup and, you know, eat the bread piece of it. But we don't talk about what it really means that literally you're saying you will never die. Wow. That your body have died, but you will never die. Mm -hmm. And that's and, and and then he did something else I thought was really cool. When you read this in um, Hebrews, the second chapter, ninth verse, it says, But we see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by God's grace he would experience death on behalf of everyone. Amen. So yeah. that's something to celebrate. Yes. You know, that that when we're doing that communion, this is all leading back to the First Supper. But when we're doing that and, and celebrating that, we should be joyful about this because this is something that he did that we're reminding ourselves when we're doing that, that we don't have to go through. We don't have to go through that, that issue. And then Hebrews, the um, 14th and 15th verse says in this same chapter, therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he likewise shared in their humanity so that through death he could destroy the one who holds the power of death, that mm -hmm. is the devil, 
And this is where this comes in. Yes. It goes right along with what you're talking about, the children of Israel being mm-hmm. set free. Yes. It's a, and set free those who were held in slavery. Mm-hmm. You see how this correlating with everything you're saying there? Yes. All their lives by their fear of death. That's right. That's right. I preach that all the time. This should be a celebration time when we're taking the communion. And maybe that's what we're supposed to be sharing this time and encouraging people out there that are listening to this to look at your communion time as a celebration. Yes. Yes, you do it in remembrance. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but celebrate what it, what you're remembering. You're remembering that Jesus Christ died on the cross to set you free. Yes. Yes. Amen. It's, it's a shouting time. It's a mm-hmm. it's a glorious time. You know, it's, it's not to play the funeral music. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> is to play the celebration music. You know, yes. in our church that I that I grew up in, it was like a branch of the assemblies. It was Swedes. Mm-hmm. You know, Nelson, Swanson's, all those, all the Swedes. And of course that there was a real you know, that's kind of staunch anyway. You know, and so so was communion <laughs> for sure, you know. <laughs> but I really believe this is probably just kind of teasing this out with you guys. Mm-hmm. When when Jesus said to me, they don't celebrate me enough. Wow. This is a way because I felt like even when he was saying it to me at the moment that we had an opportunity to celebrate him more and we just didn't do it on the planet. Yeah. That's, mm. that's what I felt like he was saying. So I came back thinking about that in, in the hospital room. I was with pondering things and I thought about Christmas and I thought about Easter. You know, those are the two days I thought about that we celebrated. And then I thought, okay, where are the days do we really celebrate? Then I thought about the Jewish people, and they have more celebrations. Mm-hmm. Do you yeah. understand what I mean? Every Shabbat. Yeah, yeah, and we should have more than them. True. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've been told that we've been set free from the ultimate, which is death. Right. You know, and that means, and I like what you said about what was found out in Jeremiah, because if you, if you think about what you just said, the true death is being separated from God. Very true. And we have been set free from never being separated from God. Thank you, mm-hmm. Jesus. Thank you, you know, as you said, to know him, mm-hmm. you know, when when you get to heaven, you will know him. Yeah. And it isn't a knowing like we know, like we think I mean, we know each other. It's even past that. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's so much past. The care. Oh, listen to this. This is good. This is coming open to me. It is so much past knowing him that you never, ever doubt, ever doubt. Mm. And when I say ever, I mean, there's no doubt that God is for you. Mm. (laughs) Beautiful. When I came back and I still have it, it's like I always tell people, I can go over and sit in the corner and not do nothing. And I still get the goal to be with the Father of Jesus. (laughs) And, And I'm not advocating not doing anything, but I have no doubt I will be with him. Do you mm-hmm. understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. There's nothing in me that has a doubt that I will be with him, yeah. you know, forever. And that's what I gained there. One of the things I talked about, and we probably don't have time to talk about, but remember I told you I went to that out of darkness to get there, the dark area to get to, yeah. to, to the, the light, and how there are demon devils and evil spirits in between there, mm-hmm. you know? And I felt like as I was going through there, they couldn't touch me. Mm-hmm. I had no doubt they could not touch me because I was his. Amen. See, I knew that. I knew that about him. You understand when you say you know him, it wasn't so much I knew him like I knew how big he was. I knew he'd do this. I just knew how much he was for me. Mm-hmm. That's when I come back and I say things like, he's already chosen me. He just wants me to choose him. Yes. I have no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. You know, those are the things that I came to really experience when I was leaving this body and going to be with the Father and Jesus, I have no doubt that all of heaven was made for me. You know, I don't like to say that because people think, what about me? What about me? It's mm-hmm. made for you, too. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but it's like it's only made for you. You know, yeah. I have no doubt of that. When it says we will know him, those are the things I know about him. And I yeah. am so solid in that. And I had to have grace and mercy when I came back. Because not all of us, because of this experience, have that. We mm-hmm. doubt him in a lot of ways. Yeah. I remember when I first started out, I think I told you guys this, and I was putting CDs together, DVDs together. And as I was putting them together, the Lord told me to give them away. 
And I remember thenkin to myself, well, Kenneth Copeland don't give his away, and Kenneth <laughs> Hayes don't give his away, and this person don't give theirs away, and Jesse DePlatt don't give his away, so why I got to give mine away? That's what's going in my head. Mm-hmm. And this is what they used to be able to bring in the funding so they could do the things they need to do, which is to travel the, you know, the world and share the gospel. And I just remember what he said to me, trust me. Yeah. And once he said, trust me, I had no doubt. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, I had none at all because I knew him. You know, I always tell people when you get there, the Bible says in John, you will see him as he is. And let's perceive him to, to the fullness of a, what he wants you to perceive him as. And I just knew that I knew that I knew. Even today, I still have it inside of me. And it's been hard to try to get that across to people. Mm-hmm. To, you know, And I have to have grace and mercy, you know, really. Mm-hmm. Because I think sometimes, why are you worried about that? You know, you still get to go to heaven. You know, <laughs> why is that bothering you? You still get to go to heaven. You yeah. know, he said he'll never leave you, don't forsake you. So what are you worried about? It may look different. Mm-hmm. You, you understand? Yeah. Now, someone that's sinning and following his his ways, I can understand why you're worried because you know you're outside of his will. Yeah. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you. I can't even tell you. Doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. Okay? Because he's the one that has to make that decision. Right. But the reality of it is, I know, I know that I know that I know that everything about him wants you there. Oh, That's wow. beautiful. How oh. beautiful is yeah. that? And that drives me to go and tell others because I don't have to question. I'm not doing it because it gets me a new mark in my and my uh, belt that I got a person for it again. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? I always call it being set free anyway. That yeah. People think being born again, which it is, but you're being set free. What are you being set free from? Death. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And that's what he came to do. Set us free from death. That's what the Bible says. Right. So I say that to you only because, you know, I, I want to go back to the celebrating of him. Even myself, I got a different view of communion mm-hmm. by us just talking here. And I'm praying that others that are listening to us can look at communion a whole different way. If there's a pastor out there and has a church that when you go to don't look at it like it's a solemn a celebration in the sense, oh, we got a, we got Jesus. He died on the cross. And, and I know people cry because he died and he whip was whipped for you. And, you know, I got a picture on my phone when I start off my prayer showing him marred like you wouldn't believe, you know, and they do that just to remind me as I'm praying what he did for others. OK, but the reality of it is if he didn't go through that. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. When I would have felt all the pain of that. Right. I would have felt it. I don't even, I can't even tell you what it was like due to the fact that he died on that cross and took my pain. That's true. And he did it for the joy that was set before him. The joy that yeah. was set before him. Hebrews 12, 1, is it? I or believe. I, some, somewhere in somewhere Hebrews in there, 12. Yeah. Yeah, endured the cross. He, he the endured the, tr- the cross for oh. the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. Yeah. And the joy to me was us. Yeah. Now, somebody else, it might have been something else. But to me, he looked ahead, saw me, and it brought joy to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it this still is worth does. it. And so I could celebrate that. And that gave me a whole new meaning to this. Amen. You know? Amen. That's good news. Absolutely glad, good news. I, I'm glad we could break that down like this. And I didn't even mean to start off with this. I thought we were going to talk about angels. And, <laughs> <laughs> or the fig tree. <laughs> <laughs> Our, or even about authority a little bit. I wanted to go into that and see where we ended up with that one. Maybe we could do that the next time. Yeah. But I just remember that he said to me, "We they do not celebrate me enough on the planet. Now I can go back and say, this is what we can do to celebrate them. Every time we have communion, and I would recommend that you have communion every week. Mm-hmm. You know, some, some or every people, day. Or every day. But every time it's a celebration of him. Yes. You know, oh, wow. I don't know about you guys, but that was good news. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I just want to throw in here that you're going to be with us in November, on November 2nd, for a full-day seminar on heavenly authority, right? Yes, yes. So, you know, maybe you could just give us a little description of what you feel like the Lord is showing you that that you can, uh, that you'll be unpacking then. You know, I'm unpacking the difference between earthly authority and heavenly authority. Ooh. And that's what, he, what I'm doing. And a lot of times we get those things mixed up. There's earthly authority that was given to us in Genesis, the first two chapters. 
And then there's heavenly authority that was given to us when Jesus rose from the dead. Ooh. And so I'm going to take those two and help people understand some things of what we have, you know, which is good. It's, it's like when Jesus said, I came to not to to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Yes. You know, uh-huh. and, and we look at that as mainly uh, what we cannot do. You know what I mean? But the law has cans, too. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Most people don't realize we think of a law as stopping us from doing something. But you could probably uh, reiterate this. But there's a lot of these are the laws to do something. Well, and, this absolutely. Is what the, and these are the results of doing something that's going to get you good stuff. Do you, absolutely. you understand? Yeah. You know, because we look at the law like the Ten Commandments, you know. Thou shall not steal. That's a King James version, but and then, but <laughs> but there's a there's a a reward for not doing that. Sure. So that's what the one of the things the Lord wants me just to give you a little teaser. Um, when I was there with Jesus, and He said something to me about authority. Now listen to this. You ready for this? Okay. And he <laughs> okay. and he talked about the uh, fig tree. He told me that the fig tree died or shriveled up, mm-hmm. and this is what He said. Because the big truth knew who he is. That's how wow. he said it. Yeah. Which puts a whole different light on that fig tree. Mm-hmm. You know, I mostly looked at it like he died because Jesus spoke and a curse came over the fig tree, you know, from the outside in. Mm-hmm. And really what happened is a tree died from the inside out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can give you a little bit of background on that. Okay. Because in Song of Solomon, I believe it's in chapter two, where it talks about, uh, behold, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear in the land. The time of the singing of the birds has come. The fig tree has put forth its green figs. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the Hebrew, the word for green figs is pagi. And we lived in Israel for a season. We were there for about three months. And we were there for the transition from winter into spring. Mm -hmm. And I used to go shopping with the ladies, you know, and and it had been so cold and so rainy and (laughs) such nasty weather and just bone chilling cold. And I was getting out of the car as we were going to go have lunch together. And it was a beautiful blue sky day and kind of warm and it was wonderful. And I heard that scripture in my spirit. And then I thought, okay, maybe winter's over. Maybe spring is really here. That'll be wonderful. I'm tired of this cold. But then a day or so later, we were walking in the village, and here is a fig tree. And it's starting to put out leaves, and it's got these little green figs on it. Well, it mm-hmm. turns out, as I studied it, that these little green figs are not actually figs, but they're the flower of the fig, but it looks like a fig. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like a miniature version of a fig, but it's actually just the flower of it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you have apple blossoms... And the bees come along and do their thing, you're going to have apples, right? Right. (laughs) Okay. So when Jesus was walking from Bethany to the Temple Mount, Mm -hmm. he went through a town called Bethphage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is the, I don't know if that's the Anglicization or, or what language, how many languages it went through to get to us to be Bethphage. But what it means is Bet Pagi. It's mm-hmm. the house of Poggy. House of the mm-hmm. flower. The house of the fig flower. Okay. Okay. So they must have had a lot of fig trees. That's my surmising. So, or at least they were at one time, maybe they did. Right. So Jesus was hungry. The, the green figs, the Poggy, are actually edible, mm-hmm. but they're not figs. So when the Bible says it wasn't time for figs, it's true. It was the spring. It was Passover time. It was right before it was like the week before he was mm-hmm. he was crucified. So he went looking among the leaves because usually there's leaves and there's poggy at the same time because mm-hmm. he was hungry and they're edible. But if there's no poggy, there's never going to be any figs. Mm. Just like if there's no apple blossoms, there won't, won't be, be apples. apples. Right. If there's no cherry blossoms, there won't be any cherries. Mm-hmm. So because there was no poggy, because there was no flowers, there's not ever going to be any figs. Mm-hmm. So why should you live if you are not going to produce fruit? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, the, the, fig, the fig tree would have recognized him with his authority <laughs> yeah. that 
uh oh, I've been found out. I don't have any. I don't have any yeah. any flowers, so I'm not going to have any fruit. Yeah. And from the inside out, yeah, it would have it would have given up because it didn't have it wasn't bringing forth what would bring forth fruit. Yeah. And and I yeah. think that's something that we that we need to think about in terms of helping people become disciples. Yeah. That maybe they don't have fruit yet, but maybe they're starting to have flowers. Yes. Okay. We need to be gentle with them while they're in this process of, I don't want to preach about the birds and the bees, but you know, the, the, the point <laughs> is that, that there has to be in our intimacy with God, there has to be that connection that causes the, uh, the fertilization of that flower. Right, right. But but there has to be a flower first. Right, and and right. so our our prayers for new converts. We need to be covering them with prayer as right. they come to the Lord so that they will become disciples so that they'll get the flowers, the flowers will get fertilized mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. and then it'll grow into fruit right, and it'll be right. sweet. Right. I'm not saying anything else cuz I'll be teaching on it in November, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So that's There's November second, twenty twenty four. We yeah. uh, we want to invite people to come. We'll have it up on our website pretty soon. Um, I think there might be something there that with with just the dates so far. But uh, I just like to say that people understand why we do this at Global Outpouring is because God has opened up the door for me to do it there. Yes. I don't do this everywhere. Um, you know, I'm more of an evangelist person to bring in the harvest. But mm-hmm. Global Outpouring is one of the places that I can teach at. You know, and so I teach there things that God wants me to teach. You know, doesn't mean I won't teach it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's just that teaching has not been um, something like my brother, Tony. You know, he goes and he does a lot of teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what God has called him to do. For me, my responsibility is to bring people in. You know, that's why I have those unique doors that open for me all over the country is because that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. But every once in a while, I get to go somewhere and teach, and Global Outpouring is one of the places that the Lord has told me that I should teach at. So that's why, you know, this one will be new to the teaching area. So, well, we're always <laughs> excited when you come because yeah. you you open up doors of understanding. Yeah, that that will help us to grow deeper and yeah. and to and to become more intimate with our Father, become more intimate with Jesus, and celebrate Him. I love that. I love that idea of, okay, let's be intentional about yeah. celebrating Jesus. Yeah, about celebrating him. And I think one of the foundations just today is communion. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It, it really opened up the door for me. And I get to share it with people. Amen. <laughs> That's what I, I get to share. This is a day. Of, this is a time of celebration. You know what I mean? Amen. And so, you know, we could talk about all the the terrible things that happened, but there were some glorious things that took place in there. And so we got to realize it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've always been struck by the idea that when Jesus was having that dinner and he, John asked him, Peter, Peter whispers to John, ask him who it is, who's going to yeah. betray him. Oh, ask him who it is. And so Jesus says, the one that I dip a sop with or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. if you've, if you've been to Israel or, or been around Middle Eastern people, you take the bread and you dip it in maybe hummus or you might call it hummus mm-hmm. um, or tahina, some, some of these things that you, with, with olive oil, you might dip it in olive oil and, and so you dip your bread in stuff. And then in that tradition, in that traditional meal, you would recline on your left elbow. Right. And then you would lean over to the person next to you because that's, that's why John, it says that he, he leaned on Jesus' breast because he mm-hmm. was sitting next to him. He was placed next to him at the table. So John would have leaned over to Jesus and given him some bread right. to eat. And then Jesus would have leaned over on to Judas and given him some wow. bread, some bread with something on it some right. that he sopped up. Okay. And then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. So Judas yeah. got up from the table and left. And then the first thing Jesus says is, now is the son of man glorified. Yeah. Judas has just gone out to betray him. Yeah. And Jesus says, now is the son yeah. of man glorified. Is that good news? 
It's well, great good news. news but it's good news to me. I'm different. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to, to me, it's, it's sort of like it helps us to do a shift in our thinking. Yeah. That things that appear to be awful to us yeah. are a part of our glorification. Yeah. If the, the fires that we go through, the, the traumas that we go through are for the purpose of bringing the goop up and skimming it off so yeah. that we become more purified. Yes, right. Yeah. And we started, we talked about that journey. Remember, we talked about that journey at the beginning yeah. you know, of this. And so we're kind of gone in, in a circle, going right. back to the to the journey, you know, yeah. and how important the journey is to to be able to, to get there, you know. And so, yes. well, Sharon, I don't have anything else. I, I, there's things I could go into, <laughs> but it's like, those are going to take another hour. And so, <laughs> <laughs> Well, would you pray for our listeners? Yes. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I thank you for each and every person listening right now. Lord, I thank you that their ears have been opened and they've heard something today that has brought life into them in a way that they didn't think it would happen. I thank you, Lord, that not only are people more pointed in celebrating you from listening to this broadcast right now, but also, Lord, that there's healing taken in their lives whether yes. it's emotional healing or physical healing, but the healing has taken place in their lives because now they have opened up their mind or pointed out that they will celebrate you even more often than they have been and that they will be glad. Yes, they will be glad when they realize that you are celebrating with them. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So. Hallelujah. Thanks for being with us today. And we'll send people to your website, deanbraxton.com, and to your Facebook page and your YouTube channel. There's so much out there, and your books are out there. And we just want people to enjoy uh, learning more of the things that that you have shared already about heaven and about uh, getting a heavenly perspective about things. It changes well, everything about how we think. Well, I thank you for helping me to link it to the Jewish people and to the Hebrew people. Like mm-hmm. you said, I know you don't know everything, but what you do know really helps out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm just I'm in awe and humbled that uh, that the Lord would give us this privilege. But I'm yeah. I'm thrilled. It's just it's a blessing, and Amen. and we're grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your review helps the podcasting platform suggest this podcast to other listeners who are also looking for a great move of the Holy Spirit. Check out our website at globaloutpouring.org to find out more information, read our blogs, connect with us, and donate. You can also browse our web store for life-changing anointed books. Until next time, this is Sharon Buss. And I'm Philip Buss. God bless you with his overwhelming, loving presence.